Hello and welcome to Murder Analyzed. I'm Christina Moore. Now today's case is a case of Kirsty Traylor and she was 20 year old at the time of her murder and that was the 2nd of January 2012. It was from Hackney in London and the perpetrator, the stalker, the domestic violence abuser her murderer was a 19 year old man from Hackney in London. They'd been seeing each other for under a year, or just over a year. And his name was Miles Williams. So this is a very sad case. It's a sad case, yes, because we're talking about the murder <coughs> of Kirsty. But what is more important, I think, in this case and which is more, when I read this case, is about the sadness I felt for her. She'd finally thought that she could have a life away from him. She'd had this new child, this new baby. And I think if these sort of cases upset you, then this one probably will. Yes, she was murdered in quite a violent way, in a very violent way. I think it's more about her personal story her hopes and dreams for the future that was just took away by this man. So this is the case of Kirsty Taylor. So in 2011, she met Miles Williams, early 2011. Within a very short time, she was pregnant by him. Not giving themselves or giving herself enough time, I suppose, to understand his personality. Plus though, Miles already had three other children by two other women. And then so it was four children in the end by three women and Kirsty was one of them women. Very young. The thing is with this boy or this man, this Miles, is that he was a narcissist. He was very violent. He every relationship he'd been in, he was an abuser of women. And I think when she first met him, this doesn't always come across, does it? As we've spoke about in many of these cases, their personalities, their true personalities, don't come through at first. So by the time I suppose she knew what he was like, she was already pregnant. Now this man was not easy to get rid of at all. So he, he, I think, made the decisions about the relationship. He made what he could and couldn't do. So when he wanted to see her, he would, and when he didn't want to see her, he wouldn't. I think Kirsty didn't want him either, but I don't think she could get rid of him. This man would not leave this girl alone. He liked the control, and I think he liked to get these girls pregnant as a form of control. Because once he's got you, he's got you. So over this year and this pregnancy, the police were called a number of times to her home because of violence, um, you know, abuse within the relationship. She never pressed any charges. She never had him arrested. Now in two, 2012 or 2011 when this was going on, the police did have laws that they could have intervened. But they can't just arrest someone. They have to have probable cause. So if they then felt that when she was being abused and they would turn up at the property and that Miles Williams had left, then Kirsty would have had the choice whether to tell the police what was really going on to get the help. But she didn't. And the police then couldn't do anything because one, they needed her to say what happened. I think as most women in Kirsty's situation, she thought by not saying it, not that she was trying to protect him, but she was trying to protect herself because she knew he may have been arrested for a short time, he'd have been let out on bail. Then beatings would have got worse. Now he used to beat her quite badly. She, her personality had changed a little bit. She went from an outgoing girl to now being pregnant by a man that was very, very abusive and would literally dictate that relationship 
whether she wanted to be in it or not, she had no choice. And I think the head, I think it came to a head after she'd had her baby. Because I think when women have babies, it then becomes less about us and more about the child. And I think this is where she started to think, I don't want this anymore at all. But you're talking about a man that is no way now going to let you go at all. But in her own way, she was starting to make plans. She'd now had this child. She's now looking at this child. This child was only about under a month old when she was murdered. So you could imagine that this time, 31st of December, 2011, she's now planning her life with this child without Miles Williams in it. And I think all her hopes and dreams for this child for herself because she's finally realised this is not the life she wanted at all. She knew she had to get away from him and he hadn't come around so much and he was just texting and abusing her, harassing her, there'd been police called and stuff, So that, but she'd never done the charges for any of it, thinking that that was the best thing to do for her. So now we come to New Year's Day, the 1st of January. 2012. In Kirsty's mind, she's never going back to this man. She's never going to be in a relationship with this man again. But then comes through this text from Miles William. And he says to her, and this is going to show you his personality, in this text, I promise I will not hit you this year or next year or the year after or the year after that or the year after that but you've got to promise that you don't upset me now <laughs> she's received this text and he ends it with love you you can now see this man's personality when we really look into what he's writing in this text message. This text message, and it wasn't wrote as clearly as that, it's wrote in how he spoke in, in, in um, the, you know, the sort of slangy terms in London and that they use and, and that, but I've made it more clear, but that was what he said. He wanted her to know, I'm controlling this relationship. I'm telling you, that I'm going to be in your life, not this year, not next year, not the year after that, but even the year after that and probably beyond. And this is what you're going to have to put up with. Because unless you do as you're told and not upset me, I'm going to hurt you. And I think Kirsty looked at this message on New Year's Day. And I think she thought, oh my God, this is my future with this man. This narcissistic, violent, very violent, aggressive man. So she texted him back a few hours later. She texted him back. By now it's the 2nd of January 2012. And she told him, I don't want to be with you anymore. And that's the only word she said to him, and she sent the text. Within hours of getting that text, Miles was enraged. He was enraged at this girl. This woman that he had got pregnant to keep control of, that he had abused all the way through the pregnancy, even after the pregnancy. You have a child now, I think, that is... 26 days old on the, twin, on the 2nd of January 2012. This man is so enraged that he goes to her home and he breaks in. You now he doesn't just break in by opening a window slowly. He kicks the door in. He's breaking in. He's getting to this girl. 
Now in this home was her sister and her brother and this tiny 25 or 26 day old baby laying <laughs> next to its mother. This man, Miles, is so enraged now, he's got into the home. He is now, the brother, I think he was 24 at the time, had tried to stop him attacking Kirsty with a knife. He got stabbed through the chest. Her sister, I think was 21 at the time, she was stabbed in the arm, trying to stop him continuing to stab Kirsty. There was blood of Kirsty covering her 26 day old baby. The blood was everywhere, but he hadn't finished. As he's trying to drag Kirsty out the home, her sister grabs her, tries to hold on to her, tries to keep her, but he is then trying to stab her more. Kirsty, in this gasp of breath, tells the sister, let me go. She tried to save her child and her sister and brother from this frenzied attack from Miles Williams, a 19 year old. He did drag her out, the sister did let go, because if she hadn't have let go, he would have killed them all. She let go, he then took Kirsty, dragged her, beating and stabbing at her, into his car. He drove her two miles away, continued to stab her, threw her out the car, just in a little alleyway next to a load of bins, and drove off. Kirsty was stabbed 29 times. The sister survived, she had a cut, the brother survived. The child at that time was unharmed, apart from being covered in this blood. The scene at this property was terrible. They knew Kirsty had been murdered. It took them a little while to find her, but they found her and he was arrested for that murder and also the attempted murder of the sister and brother. But this girl, fought for her life and then fought to save the sister and brother and she knew as he was stabbing her and dragging her out of that property that she was going to die and all these hopes and dreams all this planning that she had made for her newborn baby for her and her newborn baby to have a life without this man in it was over in a matter of minutes so it's a shocking case this. And then we, let's look at the profile of this Miles Williams, a 19 year old <clears throat> who already had, you know, at this point, four children by three women. He was a stalker and he was a stalker because the minute the rejection came of the end of this relationship, which he knew was now the end because she'd never said that to him before, she would he would leave her alone for a while, then, then she'd take him back because he'd say, oh, please take me back, it won't happen again. But this text message that he sent her clearly shows that this man's mentality is that as a narcissist. It's when and the, the rejection is what triggered it. He couldn't believe that this girl would tell him, no, it's over. And this shocking text message, when you think about it, I think she thought, how can I live like this? How can anyone live like that? And to have years of it, and he was telling her, and there was a reason for this long text message. He never mentioned his child, it's New Year. He never mentioned his child, how the life they're gonna have. It's about, this is what I want from you. And if you don't upset me, I'm not going to hit you, which we all know when we do so many of these cases that that is untrue. He was trying to do something else now that he thought would work. He was trying to say to her, this is it. This is your life with me. No matter what else happens, you ain't going anywhere. 
And the minute she read that, I think she thought, she knew, she knew, I think, the reaction she would get when she said, I don't want to see you anymore. And this is why I say it's so important to report these crimes. People think of the consequences for reporting them. This is a consequence for not, for allowing this man to get away with it for so long. This man would have killed someone. He had two other girlfriends with children. Any one of these girls, this could have happened to. Any one of them. It was just unfortunate that Kirsty found her inner strength to save her and her child from a life that he was going to give them. And it ended it. It's a shocking case, this really. It's a shocking case. But I think for this time of year, for when we're moving now into the new year, when London and the South East were in lockdown and we're going to go into more lockdown, domestic abuse cases go up a lot. I keep saying to you, you're not on your own. There is help for you. There is new laws now to help protect you. If you are suffering from domestic abuse, ring someone, tell someone. If you are being stalked by this, someone like this person or harassed in the same way as this, you must do something. These cases are shocking, but what they do is they create awareness. And I think Kirsty's mother done a lot. She was a campaigner for stalking um, and she did a lot. But there's never enough that we can do as society to protect women from men like this. So he got 28 years in prison. Not long enough, really, for someone like him. Not long enough. So um, this has been a quick case because there isn't a lot on this case. Really, there isn't a lot on the background of Miles Williams. But I don't think we need it. I think you can think of someone at 19 that would commit such crimes. And the text message, I think, tells us a lot about his personality without having to look at his childhood. The boy was 19 when he did these murders. And she was 20 when she lost her life. So thank you for watching this case. I hope you've um, found it interesting. I will also put up things about the domestic violence and the stalking on this case. I'd like to wish you all a very happy new year. I wish you all well and I hope you all keep safe in 2021. I hope this coronavirus goes away so we can get back to some normal life. But I've enjoyed my few months of doing these. I think we've done it now for three months, we're coming up three months on here with these videos. I'm loving it. I hope you are and I hope you keep watching. There'll be plenty more for next year. But I wanted to end this case this, this year with a case like this because there's a lot of women out there with hopes and dreams for the future. And they will never materialise if they don't do something about the situations now. So, thank you for watching. I hope you found this case interesting. I hope that you click on the subscribe button that Lacey puts up there, you know the logo. Give us a thumbs up. You can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. So until next year, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.